Let's talk to Charismatic Catholic. All right. Charismatic Catholic, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Are you? Yeah, Excellent. are you Canadian Catholic? No, I am not Canadian Catholic. <laughs> are you sure you're not Canadian Catholic? Because the comments <laughs> really thought you were last week, even though your voice is different and the way you talk to us is different. Uh, I, I read that after our, our call last week. Um, I'm not sure how to take it, but I <laughs> it, it, it's because uh, it's, it's too similar, man. So um, in, in the interest of saving time, can, can how go, about I call you Ted? Yeah, can we I can, call you Ted? Well, I think we agreed with Bobby last week. If you Bobby! Want to stick with Bobby. Yes, go with I that. would love that. Okay, Bobby. So when we talked last week, just to bring Dennis up to speed, Dennis, yeah, please. Um, Bobby was going to call in to talk to us about how he came to the conclusion that Catholicism is true. Okay. And so the fact that he called back in, I'm stoked. Bobby, how did you come to the conclusion that Catholicism is true? Um, so I think it it's a process, right? Um, and it's, it's a process that ended with determining that Catholicism, for me, right, that Catholicism is most likely to be true. Um, and I, it really started with... Um, opening myself up. The first step is opening yourself up to the arguments for God's existence, right? Broadly speaking. So listening to like William Lane, Cla uh, excuse me, uh, William Lane Craig delivering, you know, the moral argument or, you know, the uh, contingency argument or Frank Turek delivering the fine tuning argument, which yeah. is probably for me was the, which is probably for me the first time that the alarm bells really started going off in my head. Um, really? Questioning atheism is, is when I heard Frank Turek delivering the fine tuning argument in the, uh, the Hitchens debate, I believe it was. Okay. Um, I, so I, know, I, I, I got to ask really quick, what do you mean by questioning atheism? Isn't it more questioning Catholicism? Uh, well, I guess it would be questioning because remember at this time I would, I, considered myself to be an atheist. Um, so it would be, okay. I, I shouldn't say questioning atheism. I should say, I should say questioning my atheist position at the time. Um, okay, cool. I'm definitely down for that. If you, if you want to question yeah. or, or learn about your world then you gotta, you gotta do some deep introspection. And so you brought up a couple different arguments and I would love to dive into any of them. We definitely went over that contingency argument and a little bit of ontological, a little bit of pre up in the last call. Um, are any of those really kind of knock down, you know, really make you rethink your belief kind of arguments or are they just fun to have? Because if, if it's the former, I'm down. If it's the latter, uh, I think we might need to take that on another day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it, it's definitely, it, it would be a, con like I said, it would be a conjunction of, of, you know, arguments and events. I don't think any one on its own, though, if I'm being honest, I don't think any one on its own is enough to make, at least not for me personally, it wasn't enough to make me completely flip my worldview. Um, so uh, I think it would definitely be the latter option. Um, okay. So, so, so let's, um, let's, let's take, a, let, let, let's go with this. Um, let's say you looked at 10 different arguments. No, actually, let's say you looked at 100 different arguments, okay? And among those are your personal experiences, debates that you saw, all of that, right? And we were to yeah, yeah. score each of them 1 through 10 on how strong was that argument, okay? And let's say uh, all of them were a 3, Right? They're, on their own, they're definitely not enough to convince you, but you feel like altogether that it's quite compelling. Right? So let's say we're three across the board. Okay? Mm -hmm. Are you with me so far? J j um, just just, just I, in this hypothetical. I get, yeah, I get what you... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get what you're saying. I get what you're okay, saying. Okay, cool. So we're going to evaluate now all of this evidence, right? Because you have a hundred threes. So, uh, let's take the mode. What is the mode of 100 threes? It's three. It is the most popular number. What is the median of 100 threes? It's three. It didn't get any bigger because there are more of them. What is the mean of 100 threes? It's three. It actually didn't get better. It's just a pile of shitty arguments instead of just a few. It's a lot. It, it, it is creating a house of cards. I, I think that your strongest argument 
will lift those up. But if you don't have those and you just have a pile of bad arguments, I don't think you have, you're, you're justified in, in the concluding that it's true. Right. So this is kind of tying back to what I initially called in last week. Remember when I said uh, last week, I, I had asked the question, um, what is the best argument for theism that you've heard and what was wrong with it? And you guys kind of, it sounded like UNV kind of um, acknowledged that there are, there are, you know, something like, look at how beautiful the snow is outside is not on the same level as something like the fine tuning argument. And yeah, I think you guys kind of were in agreement with that. Well, so, so I, I, I disagree with the fine tuning argument simply because um, I don't think that we're fine tuned. And even if everything was fine tuned, we would not long, we would no longer be able to distinguish between what is and isn't fine tuned because we'd be living in an, a universe where everything is fine tuned. So we would be unable to distinguish what the difference would be. Um, so, so it, 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 it's, it's like, it's like, look at that watchmaker argument, but instead of finding a watch on the beach, you're finding that watch on a beach of watches next yeah. to a sea of watches it, it, and you're made of watches. <laughs> you know? Right. It, it's yeah. I, I, I like to put it as the entire universe is then artificial. It's a big contrivance. It's a gigantic diorama like you see in museums, you know? Uh, and and worse it's a counterfeit universe because it's designed to look like a real natural universe but it's fake so so, so can i ask what can i can i ask you guys just what um what premise of the fine-tuning argument would you like look at and say okay that's the one i i have to reject what do you mean well, let's 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 go through the argument for people who haven't who haven't um, gone over the fine tuning argument, right? Um, uh, sure. Um, sure. Premise one. Uh, so premise one would be you know like the universe possesses finely tuned what is it the universe possesses finely tuned physical constants and initial conditions that allow that that allow intelligent life to exist. Be that's the conclusion, isn't it? Well, I, I, I yeah, it's be... right. So, what's the second premise? Uh, P two would be uh, this is either due to this is either due to necessity, chance, or design. Okay, and so you rule out um, necessity, or you, you rule out chance and design, correct? Or you rule out chance and necessity? That's right. P three would rule out. P three would rule out necessity and chance. Okay. Cool beans. So then the so then the conclusion the conclusion would be therefore the fine tuning of the universe is the work of a designer. Sure. So let's let's take a look at that. Um, first, if we were to grant you, because I I do just want to grant it, so I can say that if my body was designed, it was designed by a very shitty designer. I am I, I've got so many bodily issues <laughs> that the fact that a smart creator would have created me this way, I think uh, bounces against logic. But that said, um, I, I think that number one, you can't rule out chance and you can't rule out necessity. What if I were to say, Bobby, that the universe is this way because it always had to be this way and there's no other way for it to be? Uh, would that be something like subscribing to like, you know, like the steady state theory of the universe? I'm not sure, to be honest. Um, I, I'm sure if I looked it up, I'd, I'd probably recognize what you're talking about. But um, just that everything is the way it is and it couldn't be any other way. There are no other universal right. constants that could have changed. It's not like there's a, a set of levers somewhere right. where we can change the constants uh, or of gravity and of, of you know, the way that, that physics happens. That There's not a set of dials somewhere that we can just adjust at a whim, right? It, it just is what it is. Right, right. So this is a, this is something called a steady state theory. It was proposed by a guy named Fred Hoyle, uh, okay. actually, and you know, it was it was proposed as an argument against the Big Bang theory, right? So like the Big Bang theory, I'm sure you know your audience knows this, but Big yeah. Bang theory, you know, yeah. uh, uh, just you know, we we we, we so see a red shift in the universe uh, that means that there was a time when th uh, everything is we see that everything is currently moving apart from each other, and so if we were to reverse time, we could see that, that backwards. Comes and, and, you know, it's mm -hmm. called the Big Bang. Um, but 
I'm, I, I think we're getting a little off topic, um, but I want to know because I, I, I asked you to clue, you know, to how did you rule out necessity? How did I rule out necessity? Well, this gets yeah. down to some, this gets down to something that your your previous caller was talking about in terms of like, do we live th this universe? We know from what we observe, it, it either has to be necessary or contingent, right? And I don't uh, know if you want to like tread over old water with it. With, that's you know, okay. There's a little bit more info that I would love to give because of that. Um, are, you're going into a, a, a bit of modal ontology, I think, right? Is it necessary? Is, is, mm -hmm. Could there be a universe where that's not the case, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. How many universes do we have to, to examine? How many universes do we have to examine? Yeah. Yeah. How, how, how uh, many have we seen? Well, for the purpose of this discussion, we're talking about ours, one. Okay, right. cool. But how many can we compare it against? See, the, 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 the thing is, is I can create fiction, right? I can create stories and we can talk about things in those stories. And we can uh, even, you know, mathematicians love to go over, okay, if this constant was different, how would that change things? And it's, it's fantastic. I, I love that they can go through those exercises. But until such time as you find a universe that matches those parameters, all you're doing is talking about hypotheticals. Yeah, I guess I'm, I'm sorry. I guess I'm not really following the the, or I guess I'm not tracking the conversation. Um, That's okay. So um, go ahead. Yeah. So I would just say that I would just say that if you're gonna if you're gonna reject uh, if you're gonna reject um, you know I guess it would be P three of the the fine tuning argument because we can't rule out um, you know how would we be able to rule out necessity? Um, I would just ask what would be your defeater for P3 of the argument? Sure. So the if, if you were to look at, you know, what would defeat the argument that the universe is the way it is and can't be any other way? Well, there'd be a lot of different things. Number one, uh, finding the levers uh, upon which the universe has been finely tuned, right? If we were to find those dials and, and, and make changes to the fundamental physics of the universe, then that would be a defeater. Uh, how about getting to find another universe that we can interact with and compare it with this one. That'd be a defeater. Sure. See, see, I, I, yeah. Would you, if, yeah. If I, if, but if I grant that, I mean, how, how would you, how would you be able to show that? How would you be able to show that for the purpose of this discussion? Well, see, see, that's, that's the funny thing is I think that the time to make that determination is when we have the evidence. And I don't think we have the evidence yet. What I'm saying is I don't think that your conclusion that a designer created it is justified because I don't think you can rule out the other possibilities. And until such time as we can, we're stuck with I don't know. And that's okay. I hope it inspires future generations for, for, for a long time going forward for us to learn and discover more about the universe. That's what right? science, yeah. Yeah, but until that time happens, I don't think we're justified in making that claim. That's all. I, I, I got you. I understand. Yeah, I know. It's, it's, it's really not satisfying, isn't it? Like, it's nice yeah. to have an answer. It feels I don't good. know. I, 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 I wish, yeah, yeah. I wish I could give you that answer, it, it, but we just don't have it. And if you, yeah, if yeah. you think I, you do and you could convince us, awesome. But if you can't, then I guess the question for you is, why are you convinced by it? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I get what you're saying. Um, and I, and I, bef I guess we, we've kind of got sidetracked down this, and I know I started us down this path, but I know originally <laughs> I wanted to tell you why I would say, why I would say, like, because uh, when the call ended last week, you had said, well, uh, how did you convince yourself, or how did you come to the conclusion that Catholicism is the one that is most likely to be true? Like, how did you not come to the position that, like, you know, uh, uh, Thor wasn't your god, or, you know, I I am I right in saying that? Uh, you are, and we've been on the call for about 20 minutes. And I, yeah. unfortunately, I feel like we need to tease the viewers one more time. Um, 
Oh, but, uh, all right, all right. <laughs> Dennis, be, before we, I know that I was kind of leaping all over yeah. you. I wanted to give you the oh, chance Oh, no, that's talk. all right. Uh, oh, uh, just a, uh, an aside detail is we don't know that all those different levers are not interconnected. And so that one constant being the value it is means all the others are the values they are. And uh, part of the argument seems to be that, oh, all these constants have to be a certain special way, when in fact we don't know that. It could be that one constant being one way means all the others are the way they are. And so it wasn't this big, uh, 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 you can't compare all these different uh, uh, constants to say how unlikely it is that they are what they are. It could be that they are the only way they can be given any one constant. <laughs> Uh, agreed. Sorry. Uh, tumbrils and drum beats in the live chat just said, ah, skeptical blue balls again. <laughs> 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 Charismatic Catholic, feel free to call in next week. Um, yes, thank you please. <laughs> All right, thanks, guys. Thank you. <laughs>